welcome tonight. And uh, I'm going to just kind of wait just a couple minutes till everybody gets on with me here. And uh, appreciate you guys. Looking forward to uh, having another evening with you this Wednesday evening. Uh, I know uh, it's hot out. How many agree it's hot out? And uh, I just feel like uh, I'm getting a little too hot, so I'm trying to stay cool. I've uh, been working uh, in the yard just a little bit, trying to stay cool though, and uh, taking care of business. Good to have Wayne and Kathy and Al and Barb. God bless you guys. So good to have you. And Janet, I saw that you're here with us. Uh, how are you doing, Janet? I uh, hope you're doing very well. And uh, good to have Laurel, uh, all right, and Peggy, of course, and Joe, and Betty, and uh, Brother Stoner. God bless you guys. Well, how's your week been? Uh, if there's any prayer requests or anything that might be going on in your life uh, that we could be praying for you about, we sure would love to pray with you and uh, to just take you to the Heavenly Father and just uh, cast our cares upon Him. The Bible says that He cares for us, and uh, I'm so glad. Uh, it's been an uh, interesting week in the Words household. Uh, a lot of fun things are happening here. I don't know how fun, but they're happening, I guess, right? Uh, we've got, uh, we're celebrating, uh, we're going to be celebrating Skylar's 15th birthday. She's actually turning 15 next week, but because we're going to be traveling, uh, taking Reagan to Pensacola Christian College next week, uh, we thought we'd celebrate a little bit. So we're celebrating that, and she's 15, my baby is 15 years old. And uh, I, I'm just reminded, uh, one of the, uh, I can't even remember how old my other kids are, but I know how old Skylar is and the reason I, well, maybe not, but, uh, or how old I am. Um, but uh, I remember uh, it was the week that uh, Skylar came into the world, the week that she was born, right around there. Uh, I think it was the week after uh, I, I became the pastor of Canyon Springs Baptist Church. So I've been here 15 years and God has blessed us. Our family has grown. The love for the Lord has grown. The ministries have grown. All those things. And we're excited about that. And so when we think about the birthday every year, I think about, uh, of course, Skylar, what she means to us. But, you know, what a great reminder of uh, how much time the Lord has allowed us to uh, be your shepherd. We sure do love it. Trace and I are very thankful. Trace and I are mindful of how good God is to us and how he takes care of us. And uh, I'm so glad to be a part of that. Uh, and uh, what a blessing that that is. Amen. Oh, good to have Charlotte and my pastor friend from Greenbush, Michigan. Uh, almost up to the uh, Upper Peninsula, but uh, not really yet. And uh, he's up there in Greenbush, Michigan. It's a beautiful little town, and he's right on Lake Michigan. And so good to see you, AC. Good preacher of God's word. Solid man, doing a great job up there in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, he's not a ooper, are you, AC? Uber. Are you an ooper? Uber. Or are you just a regular guy that tells everyone where he is? He is by pointing on his hand. Uh, I remember when I went to Michigan uh, as I was an assistant pastor there and we were talking about well, where are you from and what city and they would just throw their hand up and they'd say I'm right here you know okay. and uh, so the hand was a great uh, way to tell people what part of the state of Michigan you were from. Good to have Pam and Phil. God bless you guys and uh, so glad that you're doing it well and that you're with us. Vivian's watching Auntie Karen. And all my, my Auntie Karen, all the way from Minnesota. God bless you. And uh, uh, I wonder, Karen, if, uh, if uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa come to the farm, is Gary going to sick the dogs on them? I think, I think you guys would be okay, right? <laughs> I think Gary's already got a plan. He probably dug a moat already. And uh, he's all ready for the, for the protesters to come uh, protesting out there 
Although it's a little bit too far of a walk for them, so they probably won't make it. But, uh, but uh, great. Uh, AC says he's not quite a youper. Um, not quite a youper, but uh, uh, he's almost up there. Well, it's so good to hear from you guys. God bless you. And, and uh, okay, so that happened. Skyler, we're celebrating Skyler's 15th birthday. And then um, a couple other things happened. Uh, so you guys know about... Uh, Ilana and Elena, they're 21 year old twinsies and we're so glad that they're with us. They're part of our family and uh, they uh, got jobs this week. Um, and uh, I was almost, almost getting ready to say, you better have a job by Friday, but <laughs> almost, but I didn't say it. Did I say that Tracy? No, no, no. I, I was holding that in and I was thinking, okay, I gotta give them this like, you know, but you know what? They got a job, and you know what? These girls are gonna do amazing at it. Uh, and I'm so proud of them. They got full-time jobs. And I'm gonna let you tell them all, uh, let them tell you guys all about that. And um, I think uh, it's <laughs> exciting to see the opportunities and uh, the things that uh, uh, can be accomplished if we put our mind to it. And these girls have definitely done that. They're saving for college, uh, saving for cars, working on getting their license. I think uh, this week we're going to have, Lana's probably going to have her license and uh, she's doing really good. So what a blessing uh, that we are able uh, to see each other and to grow and to seize these different opportunities that God gives us. What else we got going on, Tracy? Anything else exciting? Um, let's see here. We're leaving to take Reagan to Florida. We're taking Reagan to Florida. That's a big deal for us. Uh, yeah. uh, we're going to be leaving, of course, next week. We're going to go see Chip and Joanna. Oh, Tracy's informed me we're going to go see Chip and Joanna and, uh, you know, uh, the Fixer Oopers. No, the Fixer Uppers. And uh, I guess on the way, Waco, Texas, we're going to stop in and, and uh, buy some stuff. You know, that's how it works. You, you, everywhere you stop, you got to buy stuff. That's why I want to limit it to five-minute bathroom breaks only as we're driving by because every time you let them out for longer than five minutes, uh, dad, where's your card? You know, and I'm like, well, what do you need? You know, w w get back in the car, let's go, let's go. So, but uh, we're gonna have a good little trip. We're gonna go to Florida, we're gonna uh, see some family um, while we're down there. I'm looking forward to that, seeing uh, some of my nephews and nieces and, and uh, all sorts of stuff and get to go to Florida. I've never been to Florida. Uh, many of you have. Um, I hear they have really big cockroaches, and so I'm gonna try to see if I can catch one. And uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't want to catch one. But I hear they have big cockroaches, and I hear they have alligators and all that kind of stuff. We'll see what happens there. But we're looking forward to going and having a good time. Well, I want to kind of uh, open up God's Word with you tonight. We sure to love you, and really appreciate. Uh, how faithful you guys are to our Facebook services. And uh, for the month of, of course, August, of course, we're going to be doing this uh, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Uh, and uh, it's just really going to be working out good uh, for the month of August. We're going to reevaluate everything uh, coming up September. And so once September hits, you'll be hearing more information about more live services or how we're going to be doing that. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be exciting. I think it's time for the fall to turn around and for us to be like, you know what, let's make the, the best out of every little moment and let's, uh, let's get back to living and let's get back to, to loving and let's get back to serving the Lord Jesus in an active way. And so I think uh, September is going to be a great month for all of us uh, in our church family. So we're going to be looking forward to seeing what God has for us. I did hear that uh, you know the coronavirus, uh, the numbers, uh, they're going down, but that doesn't mean that people aren't getting it. And people do have it, and uh, so we do need to be praying for them. Yeah, the numbers are going down, um, but that doesn't mean uh, people aren't getting infected and people aren't getting sick. And so you'd be praying for one another. If you hear of anyone, uh, be praying for those situations there, okay? Well, uh, we're gonna talk, uh, we've been talking about how we could be bold and how we could be powerful uh, in our lives for the Lord Jesus. And so we're looking at uh, Acts chapter <clears throat> 9 and the example of the Apostle Paul 
And so for a few minutes, let's just think with me here. Uh, we'll go over just a real small review and then we'll get to our second thought uh, that we're going to be leaving with you, leaving with you uh, tonight. Uh, Saul was a passionate individual. Uh, whatever he did, he did it uh, full throttle. Um, I mean, I, I do identify myself a little bit. I mean, uh, why, you, you, you know, why just, uh, you know, in life we, we have opportunities? Well, let's do it all. Uh, let's, let's not finish the job halfway. Let's finish it all the way. Um, but the Apostle Paul was very zealous uh, in the flesh. Uh, he was a Pharisee. He was someone that excelled in the uh, art or the religion of the Pharisees, okay? Uh, the rules and all of that. Uh, he uh, had everything obtained. So much that when he came to know the Lord on the road to Damascus, he tried to get with the disciples, those that were believers in Jesus. And they were afraid of him, the Bible says. And that's just a little bit later in the chapter, and you, you could read that maybe on your own. <clears throat> but once he figured out who the disciples were, got encouragement and all of that, he was a very zealous. And uh, as I think about him, I, I like, I want a shot of like, the energy that this guy has. I mean, we know the Bible tells that his stature, her, who he was, wasn't very impressive. It wasn't like he's He-Man, he's strong, he's got all these muscles around and everything, and that he is just somehow this beaming, you know, uh, stature of, of power and, and all of that. Uh, it said that it was lacking, you know. Uh, but how did he... Uh, in the spirit, if you will, how did he remain powerful and bold like you and I have a desire to be? Uh, how, how does that happen? Well, he was. Um, I, I kind of feel real weak at times. Uh, and uh, I think Paul uh, had a secret. And the secret was that when, when I'm weak, then he's strong. And so he was able to tap into the power uh, of uh, the gospel, of course. And he wrote Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. So he understood the power of God. And in chapter number 9, we see in verse 19, the Bible says that when he had received uh, meat, he was strengthened then, was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. So he got a little bit of, uh, we talked about this last week, how can you and I be bold and we be powerful? And how can we really be that witness that we really want to be? We talked about how important it is to prepare. Prepare to speak the name of Jesus. We got to prepare for that. I mean, we prepare for everything. We prepare for cooking meals for your family. I hope you do. Okay? We prepare for, um, you know everything in life, but why don't we prepare to be a bold witness and a person filled with the power of God, witnessing and proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord? Why don't we do that? Well, we don't prepare at times. We see Paul, after he met Jesus on the road, he was with the disciples in Damascus. Now, these weren't the disciples, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, all of those in Jerusalem. This was just those that were in um Damascus that have come to know the Lord and that were growing in the Lord. Notice what happened in verse 20 of chapter 9 of the book of Acts. And uh, it says, And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. Now, uh, that's a small verse, not very big, but I want you to recognize the impact that this had. Um, here was Paul who self-proclaimed himself the Pharisee of all Pharisees. If, if the Pharisee had anything to glory in, he said of himself, hey, uh, I could glory more because I've done more than that guy. I know more than him. I know all that. So he went back to the place that he was revered. Yeah. Feared a place where he had a position, 
a place to where, you know what? He had a standing and he had a reputation. His reputation was that he's the guy that uh, they threw the coats when they stoned Stephen at his feet because he's the ringleader. He had, he had quite of that. But when you're thinking about doing what God wants you to do and you're thinking about the gospel, what it means to you, we ought to have this no fear attitude that Paul did, if you will. Uh, I know I'm dating myself, but we, growing up in high school, we used to have t-shirts that said no fear. And it was very, very popular. And so everything was no fear hats and shirts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, I don't know what the millennials have on their t-shirts now. <laughs> They'd be like, uh, uh, I'm cringed, they would say. <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> I just can't believe it. You know, whatever they'll have on their t-shirt. But we used to have no fear because we wanted to be rough and tough and go do crazy things, you know like jump off of bridges and drive really fast. And the kids today, they just like doing it on their phones. They drive fast like this, you know, that's about all they do. But they had no fear. <clears throat> I'm getting off track, I think. I don't know, has that ever happened to you? Getting off track? Uh, I think so. I get off track a little bit once in a while. I get distracted. And sometimes when we're distracted, we lose uh, power. We don't really know what we're going to do. And Paul here, he was strengthened many days with the disciples. He was getting ready to go back into the place to where everyone understood and knew him his whole life. But he was a different person. He was changed by the power of the gospel. And let me tell you something. In our passage here, it is obvious that the gospel changes that person's life. You talk to people and they say, yeah, I heard the gospel, I accepted the gospel, and their life has changed. I, I don't understand. I don't understand that. Yeah. Because the gospel is a power. It is a changing thing. It's not something that you just add to your scrapbook or a page in your book that says, yeah, uh, I got saved, and so now I'm moving on with my life. No, no. When you know the Lord is your Savior, the power of the gospel comes in. What happens is it changes you, and you're not afraid of anything. Paul was not afraid of all the people that he knew at the synagogue. He went right back in there, and he said he preached that Jesus was the Son of God. This was the direct opposite of what the Jews taught. So there was some opposition and Paul prepared himself. We, we did learn that last week. He spent three years in Arabia, according to Galatians chapter 1, verse 17. A time where he spent alone with God, preparing to preach the gospel, preparing to know the answers, preparing to, uh, you know what, go into these synagogues and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And so uh, let's be mindful. Let's go out there. Let's be prepared. Let's study. The Bible says, a study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, let's go out there and work at preparing ourselves. But here's another thought. When we think about what Paul did, and something that you and I can do to display power and strength in our witness and our life. We go around sometimes, and uh, you know, I know that we feel a little oppressed. I know that we have our... California brothers and sisters. Uh, we make jokes here in Arizona. You know, we say, don't CA my AZ. What do we mean? Uh -huh. Don't California my Arizona. I mean, we like it like this, okay? We, we don't want what California is. And so we, we kind of say that, but in my heart, I understand there are brothers and sisters in Christ trying to worship the Lord in a place called California right. that does it look like the America that our founding fathers uh, envision? The freedoms of religion are being, you know, stepped on. 
Um, and so sometimes we think about believers being in opposition and how put down they are and, and, and how, how hard it is for them. And, and I understand that to a point, but the reality is that we have to know that we have Jesus and the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so we don't have to live our life powerless. We can go back into anywhere we want to go like he did to the synagogue and we could preach that Jesus is the son of God. We could do that. We don't need someone to say it's okay. We have a higher law called God's law. We have a higher source of power. It's called the word of God and the spirit of God. Now, so here we are, verse 20, he went right back into it. And uh, so let, let's just think with me here. What do you and I need to have? We need to be prepared. We talked about that recently. But tonight, here's the thought. We need to be able to see. I wrote the word down, perceive. You ever perceive something? You look at something. You sense something. You perceive. Uh, create and seize. Perceive, create, and seize opportunities to speak for the Lord. Mm. We're saying, well, you know, nobody's asked me today. I don't know, has someone ever knocked on your door, whether you are uh, in northern Michigan or Illinois or Texas? We got <clears throat> listeners from Washington. I don't know, is everyone... Has a sinner ever came to your door and said, Hi there, I know you're a Christian. Can you tell me how to be saved? Right. I don't know, has that ever happened? Maybe. Maybe because you've been driving and going to church every Sunday morning, maybe. And being a good witness and a good testimony and all of that. Maybe someone's coming and said, Hey, I'd like to meet you. What do you have that's different? But opportunities uh, don't come easy. And I think we need to create them, we need to seize them, we need to perceive them. We need to be able to look at situations and say, what is the opportunities that I have here to speak the power of God here, the gospel? Um, Paul, he didn't wait for an opportunity to come knocking at his door. He was there for many days, and the Bible says in verse 20, and straightway, right? Right? Uh, he didn't wait around. We live li our life at times, Christian. I'm going to be honest with you. Here, here's a little nugget for you. This is for you to take home. And it probably is not going to be that warm blanket, okay? But this, here it is. We so often spend so much time wasting, waiting for something. When maybe God has already provided it with our two hands strengthen our hands, our mind, our intellect, and our body say, go get it. Whatever you're trying to do. But we always wait around, wait, wait, and then pretty soon, the next thing you know, we've wasted a lot of time. I don't see Paul wasting time at all as I read the scriptures. I don't see him just saying, guys, we're going to just wait around here just a little bit. Remember in the Macedonia call, Paul wanted to go to Bithynia. God said, no. He says, okay, well, let's go over here then. No. Okay, well, let's go over here then. No. Let's go to Bassett. Okay, let's go. So he wasn't like, well, we're just going to wait around and see how it goes. Mm. He seized. He perceived this was it. This is the time for me to act. And so he, he says, what day is it? It's synagogue day. Let's go. And he went. Uh, he didn't wait for these opportunities. Uh, he looked around. Uh, he, you know, I, I've got uh, seven girls in the house, and all seven of them have a cell phone. And all seven of them, I've observed, bumping into walls as they're walking around the house. They're looking at their phone. Boom! Because they are not perceiving... You, you, you want me to get this on you and show you? 
Okay, so back off over there. <laughs> All right. Every once in a while, man, I got to put them down or, or it's, I can't, oh, it's tough. I got to show a little strength, man, or they just, you know, run right over me. I got to be careful, man. All right. So, what are you saying? Is your mom getting involved in it? Tracy's stirring this stuff up over here. I don't know what's going on. Help me, Lord. Help me. No. But <clears throat> we wait around too much, and we don't seize the opportunity, and we don't look what's going on around us because we're too focused on what's right in front of our face. Um, I think it's very important. If you want to have the boldness that Paul does, you want to have the power that he displays, it is the gospel, and we can have it, and we can give it out, if we just see it, look at it. What's going on? Is there opportunities to talk about the Lord? Sometimes, you know what I'll do? I haven't done it recently, but if I'm on a bus or a train or sitting next to some people, I'll just talk loudly to my friend about the gospel. I'm giving the gospel to my friend. Well, he's saved. He's like, why are you telling me? You don't think I'm saved or whatever, you know? No, I'm just telling for the edification of everyone else on the bus. I got a big voice. When I pray in a restaurant, I'm not shy. I'll just it'll be loud. I want the cooks to hear it. So sometimes we got to look and see, are there opportunities for us to be a witness? I know when we're weak, we don't see them. When we're weak, we say we can't do it. But if we recognize, hey, Let's proceed. Okay, how about create? Is there opportunities that you could create? Uh, the girls got a job uh, this week because they seized the opportunities. They put their application in. There's opportunities out there, and they seized it, and guess what? Now they are uh, working, women. working women now, I guess. Working putting the social security money back in so that some of you could have your uh, social security. Amen. <laughs> this is what they're telling me. I, I don't know how that works, but so are you seizing the opportunities? Are you creating opportunities? When's the last time you had a thought? When's the last time you had a creative thought? I mean, a creative one. How can, that, how can I talk to that person about Jesus? Well, they love cats. That's a tough one. <laughs> but they love cats. Some, some preacher said, yeah, I love cats too. This wasn't me. This wasn't me. Okay, this is somebody else. This is a, this is a bad guy. Okay, bad guy. He says, I love cats too. They taste like chicken. <laughs> okay, all right. But say this person has... A hundred, two cats, three cats. She, they love their cats. They dress their cats up, all that. <laughs> How could you create an opportunity to speak the word of the gospel boldly? I don't know. Maybe dress up like a cat, go on over on the door. No, nah, don't do that. But maybe you recognize they love cats, and maybe you can get them a little chew toy or. Or get one of those laser pointers in the yard and make them all run. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but uh, why don't you just see some opportunities to, you know what? They love cats. Let's talk about cats. And then let's talk about Jesus. I don't know. Are you, are you able to create anything? We don't create anything anymore. My generation, your generation, whatever else generation, the, the kids, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, we're not creating anything. We're just consuming things. We're not creating roads. We're not building anything. We're, not, we're just kind of using what we got. Now, let's create some opportunities for the gospel. Do whatever we got. Let's make some opportunities. Paul did. He just went right back in there. And they didn't like him, by the way. Now, look at what he did over here in, in verse 28 of our text. And he was with them coming in and out of Jerusalem. And he spake boldly, the Bible says in verse 29, in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. And so he was bold and he created opportunities to go and...
be bold and speak the name wherever he was at. He was at Jerusalem right now. So this was the opportunities. So I don't think we can, now you need to think with me here. I don't think, think with me. Sometimes we have to think. Can we expect a lost person, okay, to freely talk about spiritual things and Jesus and their faith and what it means to them? They're lost. They're not going to want to talk about that ushy gushy stuff that everybody thinks about because they're not born again. Right. And so you can't expect it. The furthest thing in their mind is, I want to talk to the stranger about my faith. They don't have that in their brain. Right. They're thinking about, when, when can I go to McDonald's? They're thinking about, what, when's the next meal? They're not thinking about their faith. And so, listen, it's the furthest thing. So you and I got to find some ways to, in our conversation, in an action, whatever it might be, be creative if you can, but let's turn the conversation towards Jesus. Bring it up. Open the discussion. How many of you believe opportunities fall in your lap at times? I do. I'm talking about car stuff. I'm talking about building stuff. And then you know what? We'll talk about what my foundation is. Well, you know how a house has to have a strong foundation. And I'll talk about, well, what my foundation for living is. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I'll talk about how my life ought to be built upon Him and all of His principles. And it creates some type of opportunity to, to have a witness. But let's be bold. Bring it up. I think many times we have opportunities that we fail to seize upon. Hmm? I think God is a great opportunity giver. Mm. I think, I mean, it's, I, we meet strange people. Have you ever met some strange people? Like from different countries and different this and different that. I mean, all over the place. You're like, how did I meet this person? It's, it's kind of crazy because sometimes I'll meet a person and I don't know them from anyone, but they know someone else that I know. So, and then we say, wow, what a small world. But no, the opportunity is there. I think Paul, he was bold and powerful because when there was an opportunity, he took it. You'll read his, you'll read his life account, read his books. When the opportunity rose, he was there to use whatever opportunities happen for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of opportunities? You say, Pastor, I'm just so, you know what, you don't understand. I, I got all this going on in my life. I got this, I got that, I got this. Listen, <coughs> and I'm guilty of this, but sometimes there's things that happen in life that are meant to be an opportunity, and we don't, we, we miss the opportunity because we complain so much at times. Your car breaks down. I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it when my one of my daughters runs out of gas. I won't say her name. I got scolded one time for using names. <laughs> but it's the eldest, and you know who that is. <laughs> but I think he does. But when they run out of gas, they call, whatever. But these are opportunities. And so, of course, I think as a dad, this is an opportunity to teach my children how to read a gas gauge. This is E and this is full. When you're driving E, what happens is you'll run out of gas, but you want to be full, right? But, so opportunities. When your car breaks down, we just kind of get frustrated. We think this is the worst thing that could happen, but maybe we're not seeing the opportunities. And I'm thinking about this in my own life. We're so reactive all the time. We get so like, everything's the biggest deal in the whole entire world, but maybe it's an opportunity for God to come into the situation and show power. Maybe it's an opportunity for me to learn something like patience, my daughter to learn something like 
empty and oh, I don't know. We have all these things, but I think we just miss out on some opportunities. We fail to seize them. You're hanging out at the fence with your neighbor and you're talking about what? It's an opportunity. You stand in line at the grocery store, an opportunity. I hate lines too, by the way. So I think we ought to take every opportunity. And so how can we be more bold, more effective in our life for the Lord Jesus? I think we got to prepare, yes. But we also got to seize and maybe some create some opportunities and uh, you know what, see what's going on around us so that we can be bold like the Apostle Paul did. I wrote down here, go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. Look for it. Approach people and just go for it. You know, I don't know, sometimes we, uh, we never do anything because of our fear of failing. But you know what? Paul wasn't afraid to fail. And he failed a lot, you notice, but he won a lot. So the idea is oftentimes you'll say, you'll, you'll see things like uh, in the scriptures that uh, some believed, uh, but others wanted to kill him, right? Uh, and so just take these opportunities to be bold. And next week, next Wednesday night, in fact, uh, we're going to talk about one more aspect that we can use in our tool pouch to be bold in our witness for the Lord Jesus so that we can be not weak in our days, but strong <laughs> in the Lord. Uh, I have to go now because my girls are going to beat me up for using them as illustrations today. <laughs> so I'm in trouble. Pray for me. Okay. There's a camp tonight. Her yeah. Who is? Pam. Oh, pray for Pam. She's got an ongoing bout uh, with some stomach issues and not feeling great, some infection. Would you be praying for Pam? Uh, she's on with us tonight. God bless you. I'll be praying for you, Pam. And stay safe and, and be well and hope that you feel better, okay? So, all right. Let's go to the Lord and let's ask the Lord to kind of bless us. Thank you all for tuning in with us and being here. And I hope it was a blessing and encourage you just to continue to be asking the Lord to help you be bold, okay? Lord Jesus, we love you. I ask that you would help Pam with her stomach issues, Lord, help give her some healing and help the pain to go away, Lord. Uh, I pray that you just guide and direct. Lord, so many uh, prayer requests that are going out. We think of the ones that are hurting and the ones that are lonely and the ones that, Lord, just need a little bit of guidance. I pray that you'd help them. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for the new jobs and the new opportunities and always taking care of us. Be with our church, our church family, and, and guide and direct us, we pray in your name. Amen. God bless you. Sure to love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.